Welcome to Virtual Worship Online with Holy Trinity. Glad you are all here. A few announcements before we begin. First and foremost, driving worship continues even though our COVID rates are climbing here in Colorado. Uh, we are able to meet in our parking lot for driving worship. Please know that we have said if it's 45 degrees or cooler and is accompanied with inclement weather, we probably will not meet. If you have a question about that, please check our Facebook page. We'll be posting updates as we go along. Directly following worship on the 29th, there are all sorts of good things you can do. First and foremost, uh, you can drive through and get a bag of supplies to make Advent Fest ornaments. Some of those are for, your, for you to keep. Some are to bring back to church for our outside trees. We invite you to do that. Also, it's time for you to bring your family promise uh, angel gifts in as well. So if you have those, please uh, go ahead and drop them off on Sunday morning, the 29th, after worship. If you have to make other arrangements, just give Amy a call in the office. Casa de Paz uh, will also be delivering cards and candy bars to the inmates at the immigration facility over in Aurora. If you would like to make cards for uh, the folks who find themselves there over Christmas, we invite you to do so. We have a direction sheet on what you can and cannot write in those cards. Uh, please again call the office or check the website. We're happy to get those directions to you. If you would like to make donations to uh, purchase candy bars for those folks, um, then go ahead and check out the Tidely app. There will be a Casa de Paz uh, option. Last but not least, we invite you to watch this recording all the way through. At the end, you will see faces from Holy Trinity sharing their thoughts and gratitude. Um, it's just one more way that this community likes to share a witness um, during the season. So watch all the way through and enjoy uh, words from folks within the community. Now I invite you to take a deep breath and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to the children's sermon. Um, today I want us to talk a little bit about how ordinary things are extraordinary. Uh, what I have for the first Sunday in Advent is an empty stable. And this probably looks kind of just average and ordinary, maybe even a little run down. And maybe it would have no meaning for us if, um, you know, it was just another place for animals to stay. I think it's important for us to remember that because the stable that's waiting for an amazing event um, called the birth of the Christ child was pretty ordinary until that event. And so I was thinking how, how we understand and think about and frame up things really matters to how it is that we are Christians in this world and how we love people. Um, so for me, this stable, this empty stable is a reminder of two things. One is how God uses really ordinary things for extraordinary events. But the second is that uh, we're waiting because it's empty. We're waiting for all sorts of things. So as you go into the week ahead, I want to remind you to be open uh, to seeing special God stuff in the midst of really plain stuff and um, get ready to welcome the Christ child. So this is time for you to start getting ready. Maybe it's putting up decorations. Maybe it's sending out cards. Maybe it's just taking some time each day to, to pray and be open to God's spirit that is getting ready for another fantastic event. So that is what we want to talk about today, and let's pray about that. Get your hands ready. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your amazing love that shows up in unexpected ways. Help us, God, to see the world with your eyes so that we can love like you love. In Jesus' name. Amen. We praise you, God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will, give, will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour or day, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So last Sunday afternoon, we gathered 11 of our 12 confirmation students online. Because it is our year to focus on Jesus and the stories of the New Testament, we began by framing the story. We ask, why do these stories matter? Our youth always answer well. These stories matter because they help us to know about God's promise of love and eternal life that is fulfilled through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is a huge pivot point in the story of God between the New Testament and the Old Testament. And it all flows out of God's one story. Once we know the significance of Jesus, we know how we are called to participate in God's kingdom as followers of Jesus. We take the same promise to the world so that all might know the love and promise from God. So we zoom out. We frame the story of Jesus so that it makes sense and it has a sense of relevance for our lives. Framing matters. It matters in confirmation. And it matters when reading apocalyptic texts like the one we just read. As a kid, I remember sitting in church and being very confused by this text. It sounded dark and ominous. And I was more than ready for just Christmas lights and Christmas music. So, so that begs the question, why this text on the first Sunday of Advent? Why does this matter? Well, this text sets the stage for hope. To see the significance of the birth of Christ, we have to frame it within the larger story of God. And since we're at the beginning of the church year in Advent, that's what we're going to do this morning. In the beginning, God created all, and it was good. Sin entered the world, and human suffering was made known. And God made a promise to help with that. We know that through the writings of the prophets. God promised to send a Savior. And through Jesus, God came to know the world's suffering. We also know that suffering is not what God intends for the world. Through the life, death, and resurrection of God, of Jesus, God launched the Kingdom Transformation Initiative. And this is kind of the place where we get off track in our thinking. We often think of the Easter story, the resurrection of Jesus, as the ending of God's story. But actually, the resurrection is the beginning. It's a new chapter of a story that continues. So hear this. The resurrection of Jesus on Easter began God's promise keeping in the world. Think of it as an investment in the stock market that cannot fail. A small investment is made and through time it just grows and grows and grows. God has invested a promise in this world through Jesus. And as time passes, more and more and more of it is revealed here and there in quiet ways. It continues to grow and change as it works through the followers of Jesus. And God's promise of eternal life in the kingdom of God is not complete until Jesus comes again. That's the promise. When Jesus comes again, all will be made right in the kingdom of God. 
and God's promise will be fulfilled and complete. So in the second coming of Jesus, we will be shocked and surprised and even uncomfortable because we will finally learn how we are out of alignment with God's kingdom. That's what makes the second coming of Christ a little scary. Everything's going to be revealed. The true nature of our thoughts and actions and words will be made known. And that makes us uncomfortable. But that's not the point. The point is hope. We are called to hope in a world that is different from the struggles of this world. That is God's promise to you and to me. The beauty and peace and goodness of the kingdom of God in all its fullness is for you and for me. That's the dream of heaven for us. God's story of promise fulfilled is not complete until we get to that place in God's story. You see, this world in which we live is not as good as it gets. This is not the end. This is not the end point for God or for us. So we can have hope. Because the kingdom of God looks very different than the world in which we live right now. And so we trust. We trust that everything that is wrong will be reconciled to God and made whole. God's incredible creation will be healed. We won't have to fight over how we participate in healing the environment. Nations will live in peace. We won't have to see any of our neighbors on this planet as enemies. Greed, envy, violence, and judgment will be transformed. And we won't have to make up ways to divide ourselves with words or violence or possessions. The true value of each person will be made known in the eyes of God. And hunger and suffering and death and pain will be no more. And along with that, our fear will fall away. Because all the earthly threats will fall away. God's dream is that God's people will be made healthy, whole, and loving, and joyful. All of that striving that defines our lives right now will be gone. And if you, like me, are fatigued by this world right now, it's difficult not to be impatient for that kind of transformation. You know, I, I feel welling up within myself. Bring it on, God. I'm ready. Please bring it on. But it's not for us to know when or how this all might happen. When Jesus comes again and how Jesus comes again is still a mystery. But the dream of what Jesus ushers in, well, that's, that's vivid. Jesus brings the heaven we dream about and makes it a reality. And our scripture writer says that the fulfillment of God's dream may be bumpy because it will bring so much change. So that's the framing. But why does it matter? Well, now you know how to frame the crazy other world visions that come to us from this text and from the book of Revelation. The point is this. When it looks like things are getting a little crazy in the world, we are called to keep watch. Keep awake for the God moments. Watch for the holy opportunities to participate with God in the world. And I think it's absolutely fitting for this Sunday in Advent. We should start at the beginning, remembering God's whole story. We should be reminded to stay alert for the living presence of Jesus that is working among us each moment of each day. So that's what we're here to do to this day, beloved of Christ. We will keep watch in the midst of this pandemic. We will keep watch for a new depth of love in our families who are separated this holiday season. We will keep watch for gratitude as we pray over folks who work and are served in our hospitals. We will keep watch for peace as we endure more and more changes to our normal patterns of life. We will keep watch for joy and prepare once again to remember how a little baby comes to the world in a state of poverty so that all might be saved. We will keep watch with anticipation because we do trust that God brings big, beautiful things in small, imperfect vessels like ourselves. And we will keep watch for God's invitation to participate in revealing the kingdom of God in our little corners of world. Because, beloved of Christ, God gives us everything that we need to be God's kingdom dream right here, right now. So we don't know when Jesus is going to come again. We don't know when he's going to come and reconcile the world to God and make everything right. But this is what we do know. The mysterious presence of Jesus is here right now to help us show others the kingdom that God intends through our words and through our deeds. 
God's story of grace, love, and hope is ready to be revealed in your lives. So as we begin this Advent season, we are called to live into some questions. How will others see the kingdom of God through your life? Maybe through your life all year. And then what is the word that's going to draw you back to that commitment? What is the word that's going to frame your faith journey this year? If you're tech savvy and are willing to share that word, we would love to know what that word is. We invite you to put it on our Facebook page or email it to us or even call the office so we can post it for you because your word will help shape the collective witness of this community for the year. And I'll end with a confession. Last weekend, our family put up our outdoor lights and nativity scene. And as a church leader, we often discourage that so we can fully embrace the season of Advent, which is about a slow moving into the Christmas season, a season of preparation. But not this year. I posted a picture of our finished work on Facebook and I sort of apologized. But I received nothing but positive feedback. But one particular post caught, caught my attention. My husband's uncle made a short comment that I continued to hang on to. He wrote, The nativity is all about hope. And hope is what we need right now. And so I have two takeaways from his comment. One is this. Go ahead and put your Christmas decorations up, please. But the second is this. Keep watch. Because the word of hope you may need for a day just may come from a simple comment in an unexpected place. Just as it did that very first Christmas. Amen. Trusting God, we pray for the church and all who are in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Help us to open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Please bless Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit and Centennial Lutheran Church in their ministries and help us all to be attuned to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. Precious Lord, we pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Help us renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. God of all, we pray for people who care for others in our community and around the world, especially Holy Trinity Preschool, New Beginnings Worshiping Community, our sister congregation in El Tronador, and our companion synods in Madagascar. Fill us all with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, in your compassion. 
Hear our prayer. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Please continue to bless Family Promise that helps families relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Please also bless Pastor Tig and Holy Kicks, our monthly ministry emphasis. Lord, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for all people of Holy Trinity and ELCA. We pray for those who contribute to our communal life. Bishops Jim and Elizabeth, Pastor Sonia and Youth Leader Yubi, Pastor Randy, council members and staff. We pray for those who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Let us now pray for those names listed in bold in our bulletin. We pray together for Crystal, Mary, Mary Chris, Joe, Anne, Linda, Cindy, Richard, Palma, Jim and Dee, Diane, Diane, Earl, the Atwood Koenig Koenig family, family, the Fenner Kincaid family, family, the Freeman Reich family, family, the the Reasoner Martinson family, family, the the Scoville Scoville family, the the Weinkoff family, family, and Patricia. Together now, we give thanks for and and celebrate celebrate all who have birthdays this week. Francis, Francis, Sandy, Sandy, Erica, Erica, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Kathy, Kathy, Shirley, Robin, Danny. Into your hands, gracious God, we lift up all for whom we pray, trusting in you and your compassion. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. So we invite you to share the peace wherever you find yourself. So peace with you and peace with you at home. And in the season of Thanksgiving, we want to give you a word of thanks as well. It's, we are in the beginning of the church year, and um, it's a time for us just to kind of reflect on the year behind and the year ahead. And so we thank you for all the ways that you have shared your time, talents, and financial resources with the Holy Trinity community and our monthly ministry emphasis, Holy Kicks. Those gifts continue to help us to make an impact in the world. Um, places where hope is desperately needed. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed our right duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through your, our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. And so now with, with a full, uh, the hearts full of holy song, we invite you to prepare your bread and wine for our feast. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As God's kingdom people, let us pray the kingdom prayer together. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All are welcome to this feast, this feast where Jesus comes to us in bread and wine and fills our lives with faith, hope, and love, where Jesus fills us with mystery. So now we invite all to be a part of this meal. You don't have to be Lutheran. You don't have to be um, a member of this church. You don't have to have it figured out, for these are God's gifts for God's people. So we invite you to share this meal together at home now, or wherever you find yourself, with these words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice in this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and we will. space in the midst of COVID to share what you're grateful for. What uh, are you grateful for? Well, I wrote a whole list. You, I don't know if you want to hear. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I didn't make the top 10. But. Oh, <laughs> you did, Jill. You're number. Let's see. What did I wrote down? First of all, that I'm grateful for the gift of life and health. No one in our family has gotten sick. And then I'm so grateful that Bill's alive and well. And I'm grateful for my family. I said, warts and all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all have warts, you know. And I'm grateful for all my friends and the different groups I'm in. And the pe I'm grateful for people who deliver groceries and pick the groceries up because Bill and I just still go pick it up. You know, someone goes into the store and does the shopping for us. It's great. Even when it's a 16 pound turkey. Yeah, and I'm grateful for Lucas and he's a young man who um, helps me in the garden and he's, you know, worked all summer outside and that's just helped me so much. And he digs all the holes and stuff I used to have yeah, to that, do. So. I'm grateful for church and, you know, which keeps us grounded and for our faith. And I'm grateful that we are, Bill and I are swimming at the YMCA and so far it's, there's only, it's reservation for people per the whole pool. And it's so far, it's good. And that's really helped me mentally and physically and grateful for my house and my yard, which is, which is a refuge for us. And is um, gardening's my hobby really, but taking care of my home and, you know, having to do all the work you have to do to run a house really keeps me busy and occupied and I'm grateful that I can do that and I'm grateful my mind is still working and grateful for my parents and my upbringing and I just said praise, praise God from whom all blessings flow really yeah. because, you know because she ran out of room no oh. <laughs> that's my okay. list <laughs> beautiful okay Bill do you want to add anything Oh, I didn't do my homework. Oh, <laughs> this, dog is ate it. this is really pretty typical. <laughs> you were number two on the list, Bill. What's that? You were number two on the list. That's oh, right. well, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> He's number one, really. <laughs> Anybody else like to go? I can't. I can, I can go. Yes, Beverly. Okay. Um, I made a list too, Becky, so don't feel bad. Good. <laughs> I put on my first one, believe it or not, was Pastor Sonia and her dedication and her guidance. You know, I don't know how we would have made it this far in this I without you. Sure. It has just been wonderful. You are, and then yes, I added yeah. life and health because, uh, and when, when I turned 79, I didn't have a very good year, but boy, since I turned 80, I'm doing much better. 
Okay. And family and friends, you know, it's so important for that. Uh, we've had these groups that get together on a regular basis and haven't been able to do that. But we text and we phone each other and that has made a difference. Mm -hmm. And then another one that I really like to highlight is those who responsibly are observing COVID guidelines. That's a good one. You know, yeah, there are so many people who just poo-poo mm -hmm. it. And, well, that really doesn't exist and whatever. And I, I just go, how can you be that way? Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> that's my list. Thank you. I'll go, go next. Um, I have a lot of the same things that I'm grateful for. And so I won't repeat them. But a couple of... Um, really COVID things is um, weekly, uh, my family, my children and grandchildren are having a Zoom. And of course, not everybody can come every time, but the kids are, the grandkids are, you know, from Washington State to New York State and all different places in between. And um, so I'm really grateful for that. It's been really nice and we're connecting more than we have for Mm -hmm. maybe yeah. since they were tiny and lived right here. Um, and I'm also, we're also doing a weekly Zoom with my brothers and their wives. And um, so that, and again, not everybody can come every time, but uh, that's been really nice to have that connection every week. Um, one of my daughters is organizing and for the women in the family an Advent devotional. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're going to be doing that on Zoom on <clears throat> Saturday morning. So we'll have three Zooms mm. uh, every nice. week. So anyway, um, but I'm just thankful for family and friends and and our health. And um, life's good, even in spite of everything. Thank you. Who's next? I'll, be go I'll go next. Pam. Um, I, you know, in this time of COVID, I am really grateful in this time when people don't have food, that I have plenty of food. I'm grateful that I have shelter, that I have my home, which is nice and warm, and I don't have to worry about that. I'm also grateful for my family, my friends, Zoom. <laughs> Um, Zoom has been especially, I agree, an especially welcome piece of technology in this time. And I'm also grateful for my health that I've somehow managed to escape these things and um, everything is good with that. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll take a turn. Okay. And I was a slacker. I didn't make a list or, you know, ignored doing homework and all that. So you all have very good lists and I will gratefully accept every one of those things and put it on my list. But um, I think what I'm grateful for too is just, well, it was a, almost two years ago now, but that our son and daughter-in-law have moved back here from California. And oh, so that's wonderful. they're only two blocks yeah. away from us. So that's, you know, even if you don't see them daily, you know, they're there. So, you know, that's a, a, a big thing for, for me. And, uh, and this may sound weird, but I'm thankful for things that make me laugh. Because right now, I'm thankful for those things. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. And I will just add, I'm thankful for good health. We, we've stayed healthy through all of this, yeah. COVID or not, and uh, we have a good, safe place to live and more than enough to eat. And not everybody can say that. So I'm very grateful. Thank you. I guess that leaves us, Harlan. <laughs> Perfect. OK. You starting? Uh, sure. Let's see. I we uh, are expecting a new granddaughter. In April. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's definitely on top of the list. Um, I'm thankful for Frank and Pam because uh, in September I had a I had a good friend in Minnesota 
and he was uh, he got really interested in his uncle's mm -hmm. World War II service. And Frank and Pam helped me with some of that that research, and so Good. thank you to them. Yeah. Happy to do it. And uh, the the last thing I'd like to mention is I'm happy that whenever I go out for a bicycle ride, I don't get a flat tire and I make it back home. <laughs> <laughs> because I've had, I've had a few issues this fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Miriam, do you have anything else? Oh, absolutely. I am thankful that my husband had the flexibility to move out to Colorado so that we were close to our son, who's now expecting uh, another child, um, and that our daughter-in-law trusts us enough to babysit once a week. And actually, we probably see our grandson even more than that. Um, and he's a joy. I, I'm mm -hmm. so lucky that we have that. I'm thankful for masks to allow us to continue seeing them because otherwise I think that would come to an end right now. Um, and unexpectedly, I found a new job. <laughs> uh -huh. So I quit going with the school because I knew I was gonna be in the cafeteria with all these kids, no masks, and I was kind of worried. So I am actually, I have a job that my son found for me and I'm working as an office manager for a small therapy company. Um, and, and I wear a mask and a shield to, and, and I have a plastic shield on the counter in front of me. So my, my, as my other daughter said, the layers help it all count those layers. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, I too, like everyone who has mentioned, um, I'm so lucky that both her and I have a job. We live in a, a really wonderful place where we can welcome our grandchildren and, um, yeah, I'm just lucky as all get out. Wonderful. Well, I guess I'll bring up the end and just say I'm like all of you grateful for my health as well. I feel like I'm a ticking time bomb some days as much as we're out in it, but um, so far so good. And um, I'm thankful for some time with my daughter on the phone and on Zoom. I haven't seen her in two years. She's in the Navy, but she's doing well. Yeah. And uh, I'm you know what, this is trite, but I'm so thankful for Christmas lights. <laughs> so excited <laughs> for them. Between that and Christmas music, I'm going to make it. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. And we'll see what happens this year. Who knows? It might be a different year. So. Well, yeah. I, I guess I should add that I'm thankful to hear that vaccines are on their way, yes. which, which mm -hmm. is really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll take forward movement any day. So that was awesome. Thank you for sharing all of your thoughts and you can keep, I'm just gonna stop recording is all I'm gonna do. Okay, all right. So um, in regards to the, um, let's see. The question is, what have you seen during this past, well, six months? It's been March, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, eight months. Wow. Eight yeah. months. My goodness, it seems like yesterday sometimes too, right? It's like so foggy. Um, what have you seen in the last eight months that gives us hope? Hope about the <laughs> virus going away or hope about um, people getting along, people doing what they're being asked to. I think there's, you know, I think there's, there's hope that, that more and more people are doing what we need to do to get control of the virus, at least I hope so. Um, and, you know, I have thought that maybe we needed to have this second spike to make everybody really realize how serious it is. Right. right. And that it's not going to go away by itself. No, no. But I think it's neat that we're we have had to readjust totally how we communicate with each other and how we put meetings together. And I like some of it. I would like more of the virtual reality stuff and mm -hmm. our use of electronics and our even holding some ser services outside of the church. So, mm -hmm. and Jackie and I are working on a virtual choir 
Oh, putting fun. that together. Oh, uh, fun. Which <laughs> yeah, means we... Dave asked if I sang, and I said, you don't want me. <laughs> we talked about that, didn't we? <laughs> He's always a recruiter. <laughs> In so, some but, ways, I think it's a little more efficient, okay. you know, the, the meeting virtually that, you know, maybe because you don't necessarily have to go to one place, everybody, that it's, you get more people and it's just a little more efficient. Mm -hmm. Travel time. That kind of like thing. Tonight, yeah. It's snowing. I ran to get some, Bruce wanted some special food, so I ran to get it and the roads are icy. Everybody's at home. Everyone's safe and sound, and we're able to meet and have fellowship. Right. Um, we're we're a small but mighty group, and and we'll grow more or we'll combine, but we'll figure this out. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, so. The, the 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 sense of slowing down has its pros and cons, but to some extent, it's a reevaluation of what's important and what we want and who we choose to spend time with um, because all of a sudden a lot of the extraneous is just gone. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm grateful for this communication here and I know that um, I should help uh, you out, uh, uh, Kelly, to get the uh, more, more of these people signed in some reason they either don't know they're on the list oh great or don't know there. How, to, how to get in right hey greg hi hi there. hi hi how's hi. it going good um so, thanks for joining us yeah yeah I, that's why i'm late we just had, we got we had dinner and we're just running late so okay and so we were just talking about um, finishing a sentence that, that, that starts with, I'm grateful for, and Dave was just finishing his, about communication. Yeah, communication and this group helping, he, grateful for this group so that we know more people and we see more people and uh, we know more about them. Uh, yeah. I'd no, really not known the Stallmans at all. And so, bang, now here's somebody that's a disabilities consultant and Barb's sister is over in Libby Bortz. Libby Bortz. And she's um, living with a disability. She's challenged intellectually. And so. so. So there's just more combination of resources and people to talk to about things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to finish the, the, the sentence for me, there are a couple, I think, you know, when I am grateful for that church building there, we've gone there for a long time and, you know, it I could never, I could never change because it's, <laughs> it's my church home. I have not, I don't get there every Sunday, um, but you know, that's where I belong. That's, that's my place. But I think the other thing, this and some of the groups, uh, the women of a certain age group in particular, I think one of the, the reasons for it is, as well as the fact that we're all, as we're growing older, facing the same kind of challenges, but we're getting to know each other, you know, besides just a familiar face that we pass in the hallway. Just, I guess, just off the top of my head, I guess I'm, I'm grateful for uh, Kettering Park and Kettering Lake. And my mom and I um, went out there, we had to return something to Bemis Public Library. And uh, we stopped by the lake and with the snow and the geese and the ducks flying in, it was really neat to see the ducks flying in. And I, kind of froze out there it was it was cold um this afternoon but it was nice to have a little piece of nature in in the suburbs here in Littleton so and especially during this pandemic where uh, we don't get out as much anymore um trying to be safe um it it was just really nice it just kind of brought me back to my memories and I'm kind of grateful that to to, to have lived in Littleton all my life and so I can um 
I, I have memories kind of tied up in in around the area and so it's nice to see the um i don't know just nice to to be in nature and and yeah it was very peaceful yeah. and so my hope for the future is that as we come back together post covid that it's with intention and awareness and real appreciation of the ability to gather and to gather mm -hmm. together. Um, there are things we've been taking for granted and I, you know, being able to give somebody a hug, mm -hmm. that's killing me. So, so I have a lot of hope for the future. And um, our big joy is that our oldest son and our grandson, his wife and our grandsons moved here during COVID. Mm -hmm. And of course, she's a stay at home mom. She can't meet any friends. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't sent their kids to kindergarten or preschool because of Bruce's diagnosis and he's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, even at one point, even the playgrounds were all closed. Yep. So on the upside, the hope is we've gotten to spend, it's just like you hunker down with your mom, we've gotten to spend this amazing time together. And yeah, there are moments where we all want to kill each other, but... <laughs> We're very lucky and profoundly grateful and hopeful for the years to come. Because all it does is lay a foundation for good times yeah. and lots of love. Yeah.